Welcome, feelings, to our very first Bitch I Ain't Scared Holiday Extravaganza Mother's Day. Yes, Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. Mom, I will try to censor myself a little bit because, you know, I'm sure you're at your wit's end by now. So, um... I know my mom will not be listening to this, so I'm just gonna swear like a sailor. Really? <laughs> Why not? She, she can barely listen to a voicemail. Oh. No, I'm kidding. She's not that bad. But I I asked her what a, if she knew what a podcast was. She had no idea what I was talking about. So to get her to even listen to this, I'm going to try and teach her how to do it very soon. Hopefully, she'll be able to do it. But well, until then, eh. Hopefully she, she'll tune in for the opening. She'll get the message. I don't think she would actually care that I curse on here. If anything, she's the one that taught me. I mean, she does it around me all the time when I was well, growing up. Well, my mother up. did not teach me to curse. She just knows that I'm not a classy individual. And we'll leave it at that. <laughs> so, we just thought it would be a lot of fun to honor Mother's Day and um, talk about some of our favorite mothers from the genre. Yeah, this is actually an awesome idea. I When you brought this up, I was like, are there enough mothers that we can actually bring up from horror or even sci-fi? And there's lots. There's lots. Yeah. We can absolutely do this. Before we get into um, fictional mothers, I think we should talk about our mothers just a little bit. Now, I know you've said that your mom really isn't into horror as it is, as it stands these days. Not in general. I mean, I, I, I can't say she's like a non-horror fan. I mean, she'll watch them if she, you know, thinks they're interesting. Nowadays, no, not her thing. But um, she did watch, you know, horror movies growing up. And she, you know, she remembers a couple of them from her childhood. Uh, she's a real big fan of the old school monster movies like Wolfman and Dracula. Dracula is one of her favorites. And uh, she talked about her uh, going to see it, and it scared her so much, like, she couldn't go home alone. She had to call her parents to come get her. So, um, you know, back then she appreciated them, and she was a big moviegoer like I am. I must have got it from her, because she would go to the movies all day and watch them, and that was just one of her favorite horror movies. It's also really cool to think about our parents growing up in a time where video stores were not a thing. Yeah. Um... If you wanted to see a movie, you had to wait for it to come back around. They didn't stay in the theaters. They would come and go. I would remember people like, oh, yeah, I'm going to go see Snow White. It's like, really? Oh, right. You couldn't go home and watch it. Um, my mom, I think she's always been a big horror fan. Maybe nowadays she probably says a lot of it is stupid. And, mm -hmm. Um... I still think that she is one of the biggest influences on me in all aspects of my life. Um, she would always talk about when they went to see the original Halloween. As a teenager, she said they were in the theater and they were so scared. And they couldn't believe it when he got up and he was gone. And that must have been an experience. Yeah, I, I think it was probably really cool to see those movies in the beginning, in their heyday, and now, you know, we see them and I think we dissect them because the horror genre has just turned into something so different. Mm -hmm. There's another story about my mom. Maybe I shouldn't tell it. Sorry, Mom. When she went to see Pet Cemetery, she didn't enjoy it. Um, it was a pretty unpleasant experience because the little tiny blonde baby walks out into the street and he gets hit by the semi. And, you know, she had a tiny little blonde baby at home, so it was kind of upsetting for her. Um, but other than that, she does enjoy horror movies. <laughs> she took me to see Scream. So was she scared of you when she went home, thinking no. that you were going to come at her with a scalpel? <laughs> no. No, my sister was scared of me, but we'll talk about that on Siblings Day. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and also, I'll, I'll give honor and credit to my Aunt Cindy, my mother's sister. She's the one who put my sister and I onto a lot of horror movies. Mm -hmm. She introduced me to Gate, or The Gate. Oh, I, God. Say Gate. I love The yes. Gate. My sister hated that movie. She's like, it's not scary. I was like, let's watch it. I love it. And it was scary. But I, again, that was one of those freak moments as a child. I wanted to watch something, even though it was scary. Maybe it was because it scared my sister, yeah. who was older than me. I thought, I have an edge on you, finally. But 
that was one of those classics she introduced us to. So thanks, Aunt Cindy. <laughs> um, all my mom's siblings, I think, were really big into horror. My grandmother, my grandma Jeannie, set up a screen in the bat the bathroom <laughs> in the living room <laughs> and she would bring home pizza and brownies on friday nights and they would watch they watched carrie in the living room on a projector screen and oh wow it just it was i don't know i mean we can do all those things nowadays too but thinking back in the day it's like that was an experience you could bring these movies home so thanks my Mom. yeah again like aside from my brother i mean i would personally just make my cousins or my mom or whatever watch scary movies i forced it down their throats it wasn't the other way around most of the time when horror movies are being played in the home it's because my brother would be watching them and he'd have some new girl over showing a new girl the scary movie so they i mean he obviously like invented netflix and chill so oh, <laughs> that's okay. how that's how um horror movies just kept being played in our home but yeah my mom wasn't really too much of an influencer but she didn't care that i watched them you know she raised me to know what's real in fiction and you know didn't care i watched all those monster movies and stuff she, yeah so another thing i'll say about my mom um because in a lot of horror movies you know women tend to take off their clothes and run around naked yeah so whenever a naked woman would come on screen my mom would be like ugh. I guess it's her big moment. How much did she get paid for this? Kids, turn, look away. Don't look. So, you know, I wouldn't look. However, and my parents probably aren't even aware of this, whenever a naked man would come on screen, which is very rare at any time, they wouldn't say anything. Oh, that's hilarious. The only So she had no problem with nudity, just nudity from women. I think it was just a surprise, because I remember once... When, and it was, you know, full frontal was even less of an occasion. So when a naked man came on screen, I remember my mom just kind of going, <laughs> just like giggling. And she didn't say anything. She didn't say, turn away. So, you know. She already had you down. She was just like, eh, Thanks, this mom. is what he really wants to look at. So Thanks. I'm not going to censor him. Yeah. So I appreciate it. <laughs> um, so yeah. That was just... Uh, a moment to honor the women who have brought us into this world and made us the crazy horror-loving fans we are. Yes, exactly. And now I think it's time for us to talk about some mothers that we've also grown up loving or very recently come to know. Yeah. And this is what I decided to title this little moment, No Vegetables, No Dessert. Those are the rules. <laughs> and if you recognize that quote, then I guess, you know, we're soulmates and we should run away together. So that quote is from a movie called Sleepwalkers. And it is a... probably not one of Stephen King's popular film adaptations. But I just love it. It's such a weird movie. It is a crazy movie. And the, the actress is named Alice Kriege. I think that's her name. Mm -hmm. That's how you pronounce it. She is just so good in that movie. She's, She's badass. the mother. This movie, I'm going to give you a brief little overview. It's about these creatures called the sleepwalkers, and they suck the life force out of young girls. That's how they feed. Um, there's a mother and a son duo, and they go around seducing these young girls, and then they feed off of them, and they leave them dried up like corn husks. And they also have a very inappropriate relationship. They, have, they are very close, these two. Because they're like cats. So was it established that they are cats or were they vampires? They're not, I think I read that they were like well, vampires. It's, it's like, you know, they're vampires because they suck the life out of someone. But they don't drink blood. They're not vampires. They're no. cats. Okay. They're cat people. And another aspect of the story... <laughs> Whenever I see a bunch of cats hanging out, because a uh, block over, there's this house where there's cats just sitting in the front yard. Mm -hmm. And I was like, ooh, look, Brandy, talking to my roommate. There's some sleepwalkers that live in that house. And she's like, I don't know what you're talking about. But cats would sit outside their house waiting for them to come out because real cats don't like them. And that's what happens at the end of the movie. The real cats, like, you know, fuck them up. Sorry, Mom. Um, it was just a fun movie. And that's one of her lines. No vegetables, no dessert. 
those are the rules. After she kills one of the deputies with a corn husk. Not a corn husk, but a corn on the cob. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's so stupid. I mean, it's so it. crazy. Uh, the the biggest thing that I remember, obviously, from that movie is the son who, um, oh, I forget his name. Brian, Brian Krause. Krause. Yes, Brian Krause, who, obviously, anybody who watches the show Charmed, he's known for his role on there. So every time I see totally him, opposite. I just think of his character back then when he used to play this killer cat. And it's just so funny to see him every week do that. But that's what horror fans do. They always see anybody on TV or in movies and just refer right back to their horror origin. And yeah, that's anytime I look at him, that's what I see as sleepwalkers. It's it's just fun. So anyway, that was my first my first choice. What about okay, you, so the one that I'm going to bring up is the mom or yeah, I'm, I'm going to say she's the mom. It is from People Under the Stairs. Oh, yeah. She's, so yeah. she doesn't actually get a name. Like, her counterpart, the man of the house, calls her mommy. and um, But she doesn't really actually have a name. They don't give her one. And this woman is in this neighborhood that's, you know, sort of poor, but they're probably the richest ones on there. And I think it's because they own most of the properties that surround their home. And in the movie, they live in this suburban area, and on the outside it looks like it's all good, but on the inside you have no idea what's behind closed doors. And this woman would um, kidnap children who would show up at the house and stick them in the walls if they committed some type of sin. And <clears throat> they had a, um, a daughter who lived in the house, and I think they kidnapped her when she was really young because they had no idea. She had no idea that, you know, they weren't her real parents. But her rules were down. Like, I just remember that scene. It was kind of towards the end. And they were cleaning up, you know, bodies and blood all over the floor. And then she was like, it is time to clean house. And then she goes, total spring clean. And she just made <laughs> the the girl just wipe up all this blood from the kitchen floor as she's just soaked in it and just slaps her around. I mean, this mom, she was lethal. Thank God. I've yeah. seen this recently, like within the last five years. I know I have because mm -hmm. it was on Netflix. But hey, for some reason, I don't remember all of it. I, yeah. I remember the gist. But I don't remember that part at so all. So the actress, she it's uh, Wendy Robbie, and I believe that she's also known for her role in Twin Peaks. She had a recurring uh, care. I think she was the one with the eye patch. I, I never watched. Twin oh Peaks. really? Oh yeah, you I should watch that one day. It. But yeah, um, that mom always stood out to me because <laughs> if you didn't follow her rules, she cut your tongue, she cut your finger, stick you in the walls, and just starve you to death. She wasn't playing. <laughs> the next mother that I will give honor to, give thanks to, <laughs> um, is Mrs. Voorhees. Um, we can't talk about Yeah, her. we, we have to bring her up. Yeah, of course. Um, and I, I count her as an evil mother, even though, I mean, yes, she's doing it because she's distraught after what happened to her child. Mm -hmm. She's killing some people that really didn't have nothing to do with the original incident. And I think she's snapped. She's gone off the deep end. I'm talking about Friday the 13th, by the way, if you guys didn't make that connection. <laughs> if you didn't make that connection, what's wrong with you? We're not soulmates anymore. <laughs> Is her first name Pamela? Pamela. Pamela Voorhees, you get my vote. She was a loving mother. One thing that I was curious about, though, I just thought about it. Do you think that she was that crazy before she lost her son, or do you think something snapped? And huh. then she just went off on these kids because it's, you know, kid, you know, moms lose kids all the time. But specifically for her, she just had this breakdown to where she just had to take everybody out. You know, that, that's a good question. I would say I'll have to do some research about that. See, you would have to there do is like, but like in like if you had to kind of if I took a guess, I would say that there was already something going on underneath the surface. This happens all the time. I mean, you've seen in, in real life cases where someone harms a child, whether they kill them or they do something else. A mother will take it upon herself to kill that individual and not feel bad about it. But to continue to just kill people 
who have nothing to do with this incident, you're replaying it in your mind. So something has. Um, I think that there's a there's a deeper thread of yeah. violence there. I was really looking forward to this. Um, supposedly, you know, dead Jason movie that they're not going to come out with now because they were going to go, like, deep into the origin of the parents. And, yeah, they were going to bring the dad into it, too. And that would have been really nice to see if there was some kind of, like, psychological damage there before. Because she also had to raise a child that was, you know, not, you know, that was a little bit, on you know, deformed. So yeah. I don't know if that, like, stressed her out and caused her to just be, like, super overprotective and just kind of... I'm go sure. off the deep end, but it would have been really nice to see that, and I, I heard now that they're not even going to do that movie anymore, or well, at least for a long time. You see how projects come in and out all the time, yeah. and then suddenly it's like it's next year's big thing, or it turns into a TV series. Maybe it would be interesting, because Bates Motel is about to go off, and they'll need something new. Maybe it would be better to explore that territory over a series, instead of just trying to squeeze it all into a movie. Yeah. And... I'm not a big fan of Friday the 13th. I've probably mentioned this like a million times. I'm just not a big fan of it, but I do appreciate the first film and I appreciate her as a character, as a killer. Mm -hmm. I'm sure it was a big shock back in the day because people just don't expect mothers to do things like that. Yeah. Unless you're my mom. <laughs> my mom would kill people. Well, speaking of... I am going to bring up a movie that you wouldn't really expect this actress, let alone um, this type of movie, to come out. So, this one stars Jamie Lee Curtis, and she... <gasps> Yo, look, oh, so he <laughs> made a face. So, you know, I was actually curious if you were going to know what I was going to talk about. So, this will be... Pat yourself on the back if you have any idea what this movie is. And then give yourself a high five if you've actually seen it. Because this is actually one of my favorite movies of hers. And I don't know why, I just I just loved it when I first saw it. And it's Mother's Boys. And Jamie Lee Curtis, if I remember correctly, this is the first and probably only time she's ever played a villain. Or just someone who isn't liked very well. Um, because she was known as the screen queen, so. a heroine. And to see her jump ship and just become this sadistic woman was just a change of pace. And this movie is excellent. So she plays this woman who has a child and then gets, um, what's that, what's that called when you have that, like... Postpartum? Yes, postpartum. And she disappears for, like, three months. No word, no nothing. Just leaves the husband and takes off. She comes back. She has two more kids with him. And then she disappears again for three years. Now, this time when she tries to come back, this man has moved on. He's got him a new lady, and he's just not having it anymore. And so she comes back, finds out that this family's moved on, and she goes crazy. And she dips her fingers into the oldest son, who has more resentment towards her than the rest of the kids because he has more memory. But um, she, she plays these deadly games. And this movie's sort of an erotic thriller because, like, you see her naked, like, a couple of times in this movie. And she's, she's very seductive and she's rocking this blonde hair. And, you know, she's got this rich sort of classy vibe to her. You know, she's driving the Mustang and she's wearing all the expensive clothes. But the woman's crazy. She is psycho. And she does it well. She does it so good. So if anything, I actually recommend this movie as well because um, if you ever want to see Jamie Lee Curtis do something that she's you know you're not used to seeing, this is the movie for you. And it's funny too because if you watch Scream when they're in the video store, um, Randy and Stu are talking, and they're talking about you know suspects. There is a shot where really? the poster of Mother's Boys is right there in front of you. And I think that. it's because it's a dimension film, so I think they were kind of promoting oh, really? it anyway. But to also honor the fact that she is a scream queen, and so they just yeah. put one of her titles in front. But yeah, that was like right there. And so, yeah, that's that's my next bad, horrible mother. <laughs> that's really interesting. I haven't seen this since I was a kid. And I, didn't, I don't even remember the postpartum aspect. I like when these real things come up. 
Mm -hmm. um, talking about women who experience postpartum. And again, this is a very extreme case. This is a fictional film. We cannot say that the writers, the creators took any sort of realistic license. We're not saying that postpartum strugglers leave their families and then come back and try to like terrorize them. Yeah. It's not what's going on. No. But that's that's very interesting to, to look at that and to see how it might affect someone. Um, because it I'm not a woman, I've never had a baby and I never will have a baby in that way. But, you know, to experience that, to have this uncontrollable withdrawal from your child. Mm -hmm. Not withdrawal. Well you you want to withdraw. You yeah. want to be away from your child. That's um it's interesting the effect that it had on her because now she has to come back and make up for it and I think maybe that is what made her so hyper pinpointedly focused on getting her family back she yeah. has to make up for for leaving them and uh, yeah so good movie I I really enjoy that one mine so. is so fragile <laughs> um I only have one other bad mother that I'm going to talk about and that is Norman Bates mother um, and I haven't watched the show okay um, but I have um, seen what was it like part four and they give <laughs> you a, you know they, they give you a look into how she was and she was also very inappropriate not as inappropriate as the sleepwalkers mother but you know he would definitely see her like sleeping with men and just carrying on so actually I've never seen this one so this really? will be interesting if you can remember some of the stuff I mean, I just did because I can tell you about the show. I mean, and I think the show is probably closely related to it. Yeah, I'm she, wondering if they did the same thing. I, I'm sure that they. I feel like they probably did a better job on the show. That's why people are like, "Oh my god, I love yeah. this show. Watch yeah. it." I don't have time. It's so good. But Watch the it. the movie, you know, he, she. I think she is the one who drives him crazy. She is the one who just pushes him over the edge because she is so inappropriate, um, with the way that she just flaunts her relationships and um you know eventually he has to kill her because i don't even remember why he why he he deducts that he has to kill her but yeah you know yeah he she's like his first victim i think really and yeah she and her lover like he 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 kills them because you know he waits on her hand and foot and um i don't know why he starts dressing up like her I think he because he takes on that personality yeah you know he takes her on and but even then it's like it's not her when he when he becomes her mm -hmm. I think it's it's something different but what what is your take on the, from the series the series is completely different so she basically plays this sort of homemaker type woman who smothers her kid like she loves Norman so much like, she's just one of those moms that, like, scares him into submission to where the only person in his life is his mother. And they do everything together. And so Norman develops this devotion and admiration for her to be, like, the best thing ever. Mm. And so he starts channeling some of these things. It's sort of like this reaction you get like what would my mom think if this girl was flirting with me and or i had sexual thoughts and blah 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 so then he starts taking on her persona when these inappropriate or sexual things happen and starts channeling her and then it just becomes this like i don't know how to handle this let me channel into my mom and let her deal with it and that's kind of what happens and that's just based on them spending so much time together and she's unaware she in the show she has she gets hints that there's something wrong with him yeah but she never wants to come to the realization like this kid there's something wrong but he's just not in tune with the world he has social anxiety all this stuff but she doesn't care about that because at the end of the day if she's at home with him she's happy and that's all she thinks about and when she really starts noticing stuff too late 
he's he's gone off deep end oh, and okay. and so when he starts dressing up like her it's because she's the one handling all of these like so he'll see an inappropriate girl you know try and touch him or or you know like a prostitute or something and she'll be like oh so you like to sleep around you know you know girls shouldn't be doing that where you know that's he just goes off on that and there oh. yeah and and he doesn't even know he's doing them that's the other thing, too. So that that's, just took a different turn because I thought the movie was just like the show. That sounds... I think that sounds better, you know, because it seems like it's it's a very harmless relationship. She loves him so much, but it's like she, she smothers him mm -hmm. and she makes him hyper aware of himself. And it's like, oh, I have an erection. Oh, my God. You know, that that is a problem as well. You, you know, when you teach... I mean... And I guess she's not purposely doing it, but it's like when you teach your children, like sex is bad. Mm -hmm. You know that's not okay. You can't. Yeah. You can't communicate that to your your children, um, because then they'll they'll feel shame. They'll feel deep exactly. shame and. Yeah, some mothers just get you know scared that you know he's gonna meet a woman, he's gonna leave me, and he's gonna yeah. be gone, and <laughs> I'll be the only one you know here. And then that's the thing is that she just really wanted her kid close to her, and it just click something in him to turn into a thing. So, I have a fun little rhyme <laughs> that my mother used to say. <laughs> a daughter is a daughter for life, but a son is a son until he takes a wife. Well, good news, Mom. <laughs> I'm never going to take a wife. <laughs> no, so it looks like you'll be a son forever. Forever. <laughs> um... So, just some honorable mentions mm -hmm. of some other bad moms. Um, Piper Laurie from oh, yeah. Carrie. Of course. Yeah, <laughs> that religious Bible thumping, almost taking her out with a knife, wielding mom. Absolutely. Ugh, that woman. And then um, I also remember Jessica Lang when she was mom to Jonathan Chase, I think that's how you say his last name, character. And he was dating Gwyneth Paltrow and brought. Her home to meet the oh, mom in Hush, in Hush. Right. yes, yeah, and yeah. she's pregnant, and so the mom, yeah, Jessica Lange's That's like, right. you know, That's you're right. too good for my son. So, just an honorable mention there. That's right. But in favor of today's episode, I actually decided to watch a movie called Mother's Day, <laughs> which is a remake of an older title. I think it came out in 1980. This version is in 2010. And it stars Rebecca De Mornay as the mom who is brilliant in this movie. Uh, it's directed by uh, Darren Lynn Bossman, who's known for directing the Saw movies. Oh. It's actually got a good roster, too. It's got um, Jamie King, uh, Sean Ashmore, the ever-so-fine Sean Ashmore. Meh. <laughs> meh, yeah, meh. <laughs> uh, no, I'll take him. And then... Uh, De <laughs> Um, Deborah Ann Wall, Wall, who's known for Jessica as, you know, in True Blood. Uh, Frank Gallo, or Grillo, excuse me. Frank Grillo, who is in the Purge movies. Oh, I would always just say Grillo, because... Is it Grillo? It's probably Grillo, but oh. I just, whenever I see a double L, I'm always like, well, it must be a Y, so... <laughs> and, you know, it's got a couple of stars from, like, the other Saw movies, too, but, um, basically, this mom has three sadistic, crazy-ass sons, and they just finished doing a job uh, robbing a bank. And they go back to the house that they grew up in, but they didn't know that the mom has moved out and the house has been resold to someone else. And so when they arrive at the house, they walk in on this couple who's throwing a party for, I think, five or six other people. And so it becomes this sort of home invasion hostage situation and then the mom comes in, and obviously they're in this predicament where, you know, they have to get away without getting caught, and yada yada, and things just blow up. But what's cool about this movie is that this mother is actually pretty cool. She's nice. Like, she was willing to just go in there, get what she has to get from the house, and leave. But it's because everybody is so scared and feel that, you know, she's just going to kill us all anyway, so let's just try and do things, and then every time somebody would cross her... Bam. She, you know, do something bad. But obviously she raised these kids to be thieves and killers and, you know, but she had rules. You couldn't hit women. Uh -huh. You know, you know, she, you know, she, she was all about morals and manners and she doesn't like liars and all that. So, I mean, I think if they all just did what they 
which she told them to do, everything would be fine, but obviously shit hits the fan. Um, so the children are disobedient. Yeah. I see. And so um, I won't <laughs> give it away, because I actually think this is a movie that is pretty cool. So, I mean, I won't spoil it, but I just think that um, given that it's directed by somebody who did do the Saw movies, it does get on the bloody and gory side. So the makeup is awesome. Um, the kills are nice. Some of the characters did some stupid stuff that I won't get into, but again, I think it's worth the watch, and it definitely makes me really interested to see the original, because it's completely different from the remake. The original, I heard they were like hillbillies, and they Probably. just like kidnapped um, three women, where in this one, they just took hostage of like four mm -hmm. couples. So men were obviously um, hostage in this as well, but I thought the pace was good and all that, so Mother's Day. 2010. Nice. Yeah, I, I recommend that one. Awesome. Well, that wraps up our bad mothers. <laughs> Remember, no vegetables, no dessert. <laughs> Those are the rules. So now, I want to move on to our kick-ass mothers because there are, there are probably a lot more examples of bad mothers since it's a horror trope. You know, you have these mothers who are evil and mm -hmm. they drive people crazy. But there are a lot of mothers who also save the day, they protect people. Um, and I'm gonna kick it off with my little quote again. <laughs> you got a Linda Hamilton thing going, which is from Scream 2. <laughs> Linda Hamilton in um, T2. Not, yes. Not the first one. I mean, you know. Well, she, she's not a mom yet, but I mean. And plus, she, she's just, she's not like super protective yet until the end of the movie, she's trying to pick it up. But it, you know. I always say, which Rebecca De Mornay reminds me of my mom physically, I think. Mm -hmm. But so does Linda Hamilton. And Linda Hamilton is a badass woman in this movie. And when that movie came out, I was like, it's my mom. It's yeah. my mom, like, doing these pull-ups and, like, oh, when that guy licks her face and then she comes <laughs> back and she, like, beats that shit out of him. I was like, that's my mom. That's what she would do. So, um... I just, I love her in that movie. I think everyone loves her in that movie. That's She's the cool. ultimate mom. It's I the mean, quintessential role for her. I mean, if anything, she is the mother of all mothers because it, in their world, we wouldn't even have a world oh, if it wasn't for this mom. She raised the man to save us all. True. So she had a huge responsibility and she took charge of it. She owned it. And she became tough for it. She got a thick skin. I mean, what a mm -hmm. transformation. Yeah. From part one to part two. Mm -hmm. She did an excellent job. Yes. I love everything about that. I should probably, like, rewatch it. <laughs> I haven't seen that movie in a long time. That would be a really good rewatch. Neither have I. But it was just, for the longest time, I mean, that was in my mind's eye. That's just how I saw my mom. She's a kick-ass lady. <laughs> What would you... I... So, the the first mom that came up, obviously, was Sarah Connor, but I knew you were going to say that. I mean, so, you know. No, so, I thought of this other mother, and I only saw this movie once, but it made a super impact on me, and a big reason was because this mom, who had no experience probably dealing with any, you know, situation like this, and she, she just had one of those, pa like, you know how that theory is, you know, when your child's in danger, and then you just get the strength of 10 men, and then you just take off, that's, that's who this mom is to me, but she still did it in a way that was suspenseful and scary, and I'm talking about D, well, is it D Wallace? Is oh, that her yeah. name? D Wallace from Cujo. Oh. Yes, okay. so, this, Obvi she was in a lot of horror Yes, yeah, she was, yeah. And um, this one stood out to me because of this whole situation. Like, before I watched Cujo, I had already heard of the movie and what it's about. And I thought it was going to be more of this open environment atmosphere that she had to protect her kid. No. This all took place in a fucking vehicle. Like, oh, right. <laughs> I mean, I, I, just such creativity for one, on the movie, but, you know, just keeping the subject at hand, she had to take care of her kid in this car parked in front of a home with no shade, no trees, nothing to block them. So not only is this dog attacking them in this cheap-ass car that can easily be broken into or broken down, there's the sun is just blaring, so the heat is coming in. 
she's got multiple things she's got to do for this kid. The kid is, you know, just... She's, he, he's getting heated out and there's starvation and then there's just the fear that this dog's going to get in. And I don't know how many times this woman stood in front of this dog to be bitten. Like, Ooh. my natural instinct is not to get in front or be in the line of fire. But, you know, when you're a mom, you just you just get very protective. And yes. she took care of that kid. She held it down and she... I can't remember how it ends, and I'll have to rewatch it again because I don't know exactly how they get out of this. Well, I hope but, she gets a rabies well, shot. I mean, <laughs> she got bit. I didn't know she got bit. Yeah, no, she took a she took a bite, and uh, it like again, it could have killed her. It could have slowed her down. She did everything she could to protect her child. I give her mad props. All right, mad props for that. I'm sure if you had a child, Rob, you would protect them. Yes, the same way that of course. <laughs> All right, my next one, and I actually watched this again recently over the Christmas holidays because it's a Christmas movie. Yes, it is. Gremlins. Um, <laughs> Billy's mom. I I don't know why I forgot. The part I remember from childhood was when she, she's walking in the living room and then the one jumps out of the tree and yeah. you know, gets her. But before that... She comes downstairs and he's like, get out of the house, mom. She's like, no, this is my house. And she <laughs> walks into the kitchen and it's throwing dishes at her and she like grabs the pan and shields it. And then she comes up to him and she's like, ah, and she, she stabs was him to death. And then the other one comes and is like, she puts one in the microwave. <laughs> she, oh, sorry, mom, I'm really trying not to drop a lot of F-bombs on this. But yes. She messed them up. You know, it wasn't until that one in the tree, because I think she killed like three of them. No, and I, and I love it. She was just like, get out of my kitchen. Yeah, she's <laughs> like, my kitchen, this yeah. is what I have. You know? <laughs> homemakers, homemakers can kill too. Yeah, they'll, they'll lay it down if they have to, especially when you, you know, you go into their domain and mess up their stuff. Exactly. Yeah. So, it was exciting. It was a lot of fun to watch things. I was like, I don't remember her doing this. <laughs> that gremlin's eyes when she came at him. He was, he, yeah, what, he was like, you wonder what face she had on her. Because he was just like, ah! I didn't expect this! <laughs> wrong house. She held her own. Yeah. Came to the wrong house. Yes, Billy's mom. Yeah, very good one. I, remind me, is, was Ripley a mom? No. I mean, she was like a maternal figure in the second one, but she wasn't a mom. Yeah, that's so I thought about Aliens with Ripley, and but I, I didn't know if that was her daughter or I mean, not, but hey, I would say that, you know, she kind of took that whole we could mother say that instinct like, nature you know, thing. and a representation of adopted mothers, yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. Just because a child is not your flesh and blood doesn't mean that you don't care for them just as they're your own. And I think that's exactly what she did. So mm -hmm. I think that's a really good example. Okay. So I, you know, I will bring up, you know, Sigourney Weaver in Aliens, um, protecting the mostly girl, mostly. <laughs> what do you mean mostly? <laughs> well, that was her thing. Do you remember? She would just say, it's qu it's mostly quiet here. Or it's, uh, that phrase, it's, it's mostly quiet here, mostly. I can't remember. It... People are going to hate the us for not girl knowing said that. that. Yeah, she, she said Okay, you said can't that. hate us for not knowing everything because my brain only contains so much information, <laughs> so bite me. But I, it's been a long time since I've seen the movie. Yeah, so she, she would just have this phrase where she's like, they mostly come down here, mostly, or something. And it was just one of those things that just caught on. I think South Park even made fun of it, too. But, you know, like, Ripley took care of the little girl and got into this robotic machine just to That's do right. it. And, I mean, you that's know, the line that That's the remembers. line. It is referring to the little Get girl. Life, man, you bitch. Exactly. Yeah. So, I, yeah, Ripley, badass mother figure. Excellent. Well, now we can't talk about Mother's Day without, you know, talking about the children that ruin their lives. My next quote <laughs> A boy's best friend is his mother. We've already talked about Psycho, but the first children I would like to give special attention to is the evil little blonde children from Village of the Dam. The remake <laughs> from 95. Yeah. Those children were so scary. Yes, they were. <laughs> they yes. were evil. Um, I mean, just the hair alone. Just the hair alone. And they were just so evil. 
I can brush my hair myself. There's no need to be so emotional. They were so scary. <laughs> um, I'm sure people make fun of it now, or they probably make fun of it then. I don't think it made any money. But, no. That was scary. That was very scary. That was a scary That was a one. remake. Um, I never saw the old one. I Did didn't you see, see the, the original. original? There were see. actually two different versions. I oh, think. really? I think one of them was like a British film, and I think the British version, mm -hmm. ahead of its time. They had children who were not all white. Yeah. They all looked different. I think some of them were um, were Asian, some of them were black. Um, but they all had the thing where their eyes glowed and they were evil. Um, I think it was the, the same premise. Um, but, yeah, those kids were scary. And, and another thing with these kids, like, yeah, so they had the power to make you do whatever they wanted you to do. But, my God... I mean, the one scene that stands out to me still is when, yes, you know exactly <laughs> what I'm talking about. He's, he's, he's doing a gesture. He knew exactly what I was talking about. I put yeah. my hand in the pot. Yeah, this is, he, the made boiling this, water. he made this woman just put her entire arm into this pot and just burn her, oh, and just hearing her scream. And they, no emotion, Terrible. no reaction. They just staring at her. Yeah, go ahead and do it. Yeah, put your hand in the pot. I mean, that was, that was the turning point in the movie where it was like, I mean, she was like, my child's evil. I can't face this. I mean, I don't know if I could do it either. So that was a, that was a really good one, Evil Children. A little side, little, you know, pop-up video moment. So the little boy that ended up living and, like, escaping. Mm -hmm. So that little actor turned out to be uh, Thomas Decker. Yes. Who um, was in the remake of the Nightmare on Elm Street movie. He played right. sort of the the rebel or the you know the bad boy of the of the movie but he's like a huge horror fan mm -hmm. and um i've seen him in some other titles he was also in like the secret circle that which show that was on the wb right after charm anyways but yeah he's a really big mm -hmm. fan of horror and so i i believe that was his first mm -hmm. starring role he also uh, did the sarah connor chronicles. yeah the sarah connor chronicles where he was john connor in that yeah. one too so yeah i like i like him he's a cool guy and and mm -hmm. it took me a while to put two and two together but yeah i'd read somewhere that he was the little boy who makes it out mm -hmm. so good one very good the one that i will i mean bad seeds how can we not talk about the golden boy, the the all good American sweetheart Macaulay Culkin <gasps> in The Good Son? Yeah. I mean, what? Okay, first of all, let's just say that this is probably one of the most brilliant ideas they've ever had back in the day to take a kid who is known for being just this lovable, adoring boy and then make him evil. First of all, is he capable of doing it? Secondly, can he pull it off and actually still make people like him afterwards? And I thought he did an amazing job. You know, because you're so used to watching him and doing Home Alone, you might see him try and do something bad and it just looks cheesy or over the top or, you know, whatever. And I think he pulled it off great. But that kid was crazy. But another thing that made him such a very evil kid is that he was under the radar. Yeah. He managed to, he took out his own, what, brother or sister? Well, he put her in the hospital, but he almost killed her. Yeah, yeah but the youngest one, didn't he actually take out one of his siblings, oh, too? Oh, that's right. And that, they're not in a part of the story. Yeah, they, yeah, it was sort of told in narration, but he managed to do that, and his parents had no idea. I think so. That's and right. for him to go into, you know, a little of the adolescent stage and still be undercover, this bad kid... Like, that's skill. <laughs> that's fright that is frightening. It is very frightening. Like when we're talking about alien children with creepy blonde hair, that's one thing, but a child who you think is just perfect and sweet, the best son. It's my autobiography we're telling here. <laughs> no. That's that's really scary. That is something that I don't know if a lot of parents have that fear, but and it's, it's not even anything that had to do with the parents raising him. Yeah. It was just how he was. And, and I, I think a lot of people are like, like Ted Bundy. That's how he was. Yeah. And what a Sophie's choice at the end for this mother. Oh, yeah. To have to choose in that way. She I knew. Mean, she, she, <laughs> she knew. I, I don't know any mother who could do that. And 
Well, wow. that know. that was an interesting way to, to end something. Again, so. Rob, when you become a mother <laughs> and you have to choose between your evil offspring and your well-behaved nephew who's not trying to murder you, you know, we'll see what you choose. Yeah. <laughs> um, I am going to now cite, and I tried to do a little homework like Rob did, and I watched... I think it's a, a German or Austrian film. It came out a couple years ago. It's called Goodnight Mommy. And I remember seeing the trailer when it first came out. It looked really cool. Sorry, it came out three years ago. God, how time flies. <laughs> the problem I have with this, and I'm talking about it now because the trailer does make you think, oh, it's the mom. The mom... She's crazy. It's not her. Mm -hmm. And I, I thought that was what it was going to be. I was like, ooh, this woman came home and it's not their mother. What happened to the real mother? But the twins, they kind of give it away at the beginning. I don't know if I can recommend this. I would say if you're going to watch it, um, it's in German, I think, mm -hmm. to my non-German speaking ears. It's either Austrian or German. But... You know, I have subtitles. Watch it without the subtitles. And if you speak German, put it on mute. It might be an interesting silent film. Otherwise, the twist is given away really fast. I okay. mean, I, I just... I haven't seen it before, and I, I'm, I'm still going to watch it. You should still watch yeah. it. I mean, I have it for another, like, 24 hours if you want to, like, pop onto my, my okay. Amazon account. I'll yeah I'll I'll check it out because I I have been wanting to see this I missed my opportunity in and the it theater, is creepy so. it's creepy but um and the the thing is a lot of it is within this fantasy and this the imagination of the children mm -hmm. so a lot of things it's like this doesn't make oh of course it doesn't make sense this is like what the children think is happening but it's not really happening or at least that's how it's perceived I don't think certain things happened. I don't think she just walked butt naked into the woods and started, like, gyrating her head, and it's weird. Um, the, the, the aspect of, like, keeping her face constantly covered is interesting. So, I mean, it is misleading, and I, I, at the beginning, you do know what's happening. And they keep saying it. They keep saying it's like, I'm not going to play this game anymore. Yeah. I'm not going to play this game. I'm not going to play along. And it's like... So you're saying the trailer kind of ruined the movie for no, you? No, not it the was trailer, like, just okay. the beginning of the film. Okay, the um, fact that it was like revealed, or it, okay. I, I feel like it, it 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 lets you know real quick. Okay, so it's not so much the mother; it's something has happened to the children, and um, that has some negative effects on the relationship with the mother. Yeah, um, especially since she's had this this constructive surgery or whatever she's mm -hmm. she's had plastic surgery so she has her face covered so it's like who is she is she their mother but and this will be interesting so I'll, I'll leave it to the listeners as well we would definitely like to know what you guys thought of good night mommy if you if any of you have seen it you know definitely go to our uh, Facebook page or Twitter and just tweet at us or post something and let us know what you thought of this movie because I think this is a very interesting uh, story and just from what you have described from it I'm curious how everybody has you know thought about this and and you know what they thought so yes we would love to hear from you guys if you guys seen this movie um, write us, let us know what you thought. If you haven't, check it out. I'll be doing it very soon, too. And then, you know, we can comp compare some notes and maybe revisit this and see what everybody kind of thought about it. Because, yeah. Um, yeah, this is an interesting premise. Um, so, well, we can't go through Mother's Day without talking about one of the best mommies ever. This is a movie that I watch every year around Mother's Day, and I can't help it. She's one of my favorite moms ever in, in movies, and that's Kathleen Turner in Serial Mom. <laughs> <laughs> this is John Waters at his best. Uh, I saw this movie by myself in theaters because nobody wanted to see this crazy wackadoodle movie. But Kathleen Turner plays this sort of Donna Reed, sort of old school, you know, 50s mom where she's old school morals and rules. She raises her kids to you know, just do the right thing. They can't even chew gum in their house. 
But little do they know is that on the side, this woman is obsessed with serial killers and she even kills herself. And it doesn't really click in her to do these bad things until somebody goes against her old-fashioned rules. For instance, not wearing white after Labor Day, or if somebody steals her parking space, or pisses one of her, you know, kids off. Something will just trigger and she'll take you out, and there is no limit. This woman will break into your home. She'll kill you during the daylight. She had no qualms about any of it. She took you out. And it's a comedy, obviously, in case you guys haven't seen it, but it is hilarious and Kathleen Turner is amazing in it. And if it's not if it's not Jessica Rabbit, this is who I like reference her to is oh. Serial Mom. <laughs> Serial Mom is always something that I enjoy watching every every Mother's Day and yeah. It, it's just a hilarious movie, so I had to bring that up. Awesome. Nice. Well, I think that we've done enough damage for our mothers to be proud. This is a very good idea. I like this. This was fun. This I like fun. this one. Yeah, so definitely look forward to the next holiday specials. We're going to do this every time. Aside from our regular, regularly scheduled episodes, we just thought that this would be fun to specifically honor the days and honor the people that are associated with it. Yeah. Um, as always... Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, all of our us. social media, Instagram, Facebook. Share us with your friends, anybody who's a horror fan, let them know that yes. we're here and we, um, yeah, we want to keep doing this a lot more. So yeah, all of your feedback, your ideas, we'll take them all in, try and make it an episode. So yes, yes. definitely hit us up at Fear Bias on Facebook, Instagram. Twitter, yeah, YouTube. Look up Bitch I Ain't Scared. We're everywhere. Thank you guys for listening. Happy Mother's Day. See you guys next time. On Bitch I Ain't Scared.